and welcome to our webinar configuration of weighing electronics. In this chapter we like to explain the purpose and configuration of weighing electronics. You see in this slide um, a measuring chain uh, consisting of load cells which are installed at the process vessel scale. Each load cell has a cable which is connected to a junction box and from the junction box there is one cable running to the weighing electronics. The weighing electronics can be an indicator or a transmitter. Which is the role of such an instrument? And the transmitter is amplifying, digitalizing and filtering the analog signal coming from the load cells uh, so that it can be either displayed on a digital display or transmitted to a PLC or also to a PC. I would like to ask you a question. If three load cells are collected, connected to a process vessel scale and each load cell has a separate cable, which is the result of the three analog signals coming out from the load cells? Will it be the sum or will it be the average? I give you some seconds to consider and then I will give you the answer. Well, each load cell is um, including um, a resistor. So we have basically uh, a three, re three resistor wiring diagram. The three resistors are wired parallel and parallel wiring means that the voltages are averaged and not summed up. So if one load cell has an output of 4 millivolt, the second has 6 millivolt and the third one has 5 millivolt output, the average will be 5 millivolt, which is received by the transmitter. Another question regarding the function of a transmitter is how far can the instrument be installed from the vessel scale? <coughs> and with our products and our cables, we commit to a distance of up to 300 meter far from the vessel scale um, to which the signal can be transferred without any loss of quality. This is due to a good shielding, uh, good in electromagnetic insulation of the different components. The last aspect is about general aspect of, of electronics is um, the influence on the accuracy. We started um, to have a look at the accuracy, the overall accuracy of the um, measuring chain. Um, there is an impact on the accuracy of the, um, of the measuring system, but this influence is small compared to that of the load cells. So if we are looking at the overall accuracy of the measuring chain, the instrument accuracy can be specified and calculated as an overall accuracy, but uh, the part is small um, compared to that of the load cells. We will now look into one instrument a little bit closer. closely. Um, this is a field mounting, field housing transmitter, uh, which comes in a stainless steel panel. And um, one um, weighing point, one process vessel scale can be connected to this field housing transmitter and from the field housing transmitter there are several interfaces to connect to PCs, PLCs or set digital outputs. This instrument is called PR5230 and on the right side you see a scale simulator which simulates a process vessel scale. For example, different filling levels can be shown. In the middle you see um, the connection of the simulator, means the load cells to the transmitters, and also an Ethernet cable, which is uh, connected to a laptop or PC. There are more sockets and slots for field bus cards, serial, IO, serial connections and digital IOs. In this case, we do the configuration um, with the laptop. 
for transmitters, a cable-based configuration or communication is required because they don't have any keypad, any keys. Indicators can also be configured via a keypad, um, but usually the comfort is less than the configuration via software because uh, you have uh, less lines, uh, the display has not the same standard as um, on a PC. The configuration standard for PC configuration is either via serial communication with a USB cable or either a TCP IP. We will now shortly enter the setup menu of such a transmitter and the setup menu will show all submenus for setting the communication, the operation and the calibration of the instrument. The menu is almost identical among different instrument designs. So if we offer a rail mount transmitter or an indicator or these field housing instruments, it doesn't make any difference um, in the layout of the setup menu. I will now show you the um, configuration options of such a transmitter in a live demonstration. ...software of the PR5230 transmitter via a common internet browser. Um, one way to open the software, the configuration menu, is to type in the IP address of the indicator, which is shown on the display of uh, the transmitter. And then the configuration menu will open. We are here in the setup menu, which is the main menu and show, shows all the, um, the functions for configuration and calibration. We will look, look into a few of them as there are uh, serial ports parameters. Here you see different devices or protocols uh, which can be connected or communicated via the, um, the serial interfaces. Um, a printer can be connected, of course, and you can uh, select which um, interface uh, it shall be connected to. In this case, it shows only the built-in RS-232. Uh, there can be added more um, uh, serial uh, options. Um, to address and connect other devices. We can connect, connect a remote display. In this case, um, the built-in RS-485 interface is already configured to the remote display. Uh, there are protocols for Modbus RTU available. Uh, SMA is a Scale Manufacturers Association communication protocol. EWCOM is a proprietary prot protocol of the transmitter itself and uh, in the same way the XPPI protocol. So all these protocols can be transmitted via one of the, um, the RS-232 or RS-485 interfaces. We will leave this menu and we switch to uh, printing parameters. The PR5230 transmitter can print as well and um, you can configure a ticket, a relatively simple ticket consisting out of six lines uh, with different parameters. Uh, for example, uh, you can select the parameters which shall be printed like date and time for line one and then in line two the gross weight then carriage return line feed and so on um, can add a sequence number and you can change the order of the lines as you like we save the changes and we go to the next menu we could set the field bus parameters in case um, a field bus card would be connected. Um, under network parameters, um, you find all settings regarding the Ethernet TCP IP network settings, like IP address, like the host name and the MAC address. 
Then we go into weighing point, which is the most uh, complex and powerful menu, submenu. As you see here, um, there is a um, setup configuration and calibration uh, menu. We enter the calibration menu and then we find um, three opportunities to do a new, new calibration, to modify an existing calibration and to change parameters which are related to the weighing um, point. Here under parameters we find um, settings to set the measuring time. This is the time um, at which the transmitter produces a new update of a weighing value. In this case it is very short, it's five milliseconds and it can uh, they can be entered different times. Uh, filters can be set, digital filters um, and other parameters like zero set, uh, a zero set range in which the instrument can be set to zero for example. Or an overload range. Uh, this means a tolerance of a number of digits uh, in which the instrument um, accepts an overload. It will show the overload, um, <coughs> but it will um, accept the value. So we leave the calibration menu and um, at the last point there are display items um, which contain uh, some settings for the display like uh, colors and uh, yeah, to show a bar graph for example. Um, yeah, these are display settings for the instrument itself um, where the layout of the display on the transmitter can be individually configured which is a very nice feature. Digital I.O. parameters allow to set direct digital outputs from the transmitter to any sensor like a valve uh, or a motor or whatever or a conveyor. We have uh, three digital outputs and we have three digital inputs. Uh, we can for example set a marker bit and a marker bit is just an address which can be set to one or zero depending on a condition. No. Here you see different um, outputs when, which can be collected, which can be selected. And you see different inputs like uh, set the transmitter to zero, set tear, reset tear and so on. No. Also there are free addresses just to set a value to one or to zero. So the instrument and the transmitter can perform simple control tasks. These can be set using the outputs and input settings. We also have analog output parameters uh, in case an analog output card is inserted. Um, and you can set here the limits for the 4 to 20 milliamp output. Thank you for attending this webinar. We hope you enjoyed the given informations. If you like to pose a question or send any feedback, please address it to matthias.rehren at minibea-intech.com. Goodbye, thank you.